welcome to episode 212 of In Touch with iOS, the show that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my guest this week, I'm so thrilled as always to have him, Mr. Chuck Joyner. How you doing, Chuck? I'm great, David. How are you? Doing great. I'm glad you're here. We're going to have a lot of great things to talk about. And we wouldn't have a show without Mr. Jeff Gamut. He's back on the show. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing well. And uh, and I think it's great that Chuck is here, too, because, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's good to have someone of his caliber here. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chuck, um, no pressure. No, yeah, I'm, I'm, thank you. I think I mean, but the quality because... of the show is all on your shoulders. Is it, is yeah. it, oh boy. Okay. Well, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah. So we got a uh, good, good amount of things to talk about this week. Uh, I am going to do a, um, a demonstration and uh, talk about the PlexiCam. Got some units. We're going to be uh, showing it on video here on YouTube as well as uh, we'll talk about it here and there on the show. So that'll be coming up later, later in the show today, as well as some good news stories, um, uh, security update with uh, iOS, talking about that as well. But uh, let's just uh, dive right into the news for this week, as we always do. Um, first story here was a uh, new App Store section reveals that 15 games are leaving the Apple Arcade soon. Apple Arcade is set to lose 15 games in the near future, according to a new section in the arcade area of the App Store titled Leaving Arcade Soon. And uh, there's a whole list here of following games that are going to be leaving a new section and uh, all that stuff. Uh you know, Apple's had the app, the uh, the Arca Apple Arcade for a number of years now, and I believe this is the first time I recall them ever doing this. Um, I don't know if any games uh, st stand out to you, Jeff. Yeah, I don't see anything too overly exciting that I'm going to be it's, unhappy that's missed. But what do you think? Well, um, I I think they have done this before, but this oh, is the first okay. time they've announced here's what's leaving. Okay, so this kind of like, it just kind of quietly leaves the the arcade. Yeah. Um, and, and the stuff that's leaving, I'm looking back at the list again, and uh, I, I'm not seeing notes. anything that, that has me nah. stressed. Nah. Um, mm. the, uh, the thing people need to remember is that Apple Arcade is a subscription. It's not a guarantee of permanent yep. access to all the games. So, uh, so going into it, assuming that you're going to see a rotation where new stuff comes in and some old stuff goes out, just... Just set that as an expectation. Um, the the thing that uh, I'm not sure if I have uh, or, or if they've actually said anything about yet, I haven't seen, is uh, what happens for people who are currently playing the games that are going to go away. Is there some way that they can keep like their high scores or their progress, or do they yeah. just lose that too? I believe they were going to lose it, but I also saw that the games would be available for a short period of time before they'd stop working. So um, I don't know if they're going to even if even having high scores is going to do anything if the game isn't available anymore. So, well, uh, a lot of these games are available, or <clears throat> either are or will be available outside of the the uh, oh, Apple Arcade. So they, can, they can buy it. So if they wanted to, yeah, as a separate app. So if you're really a hardcore of any of those games, there. Again, links in the show notes. Uh, take a look at that, Chuck. I know you're not much of a gamer, but uh, I found this, I found this to be interesting as far as uh, Apple Arcade and what Apple's doing with this. Yeah, I mean, Jeff Jeff sort of said what needs to be said. You know, just because you subscribe to this doesn't mean it's going to be there forever. Right. When I saw this, though, I confessed uh, because I uh, you're right. I'm not a gamer at all. I wouldn't I wouldn't know any of these names yeah. you know, coming or going at all. But. Um, <clears throat> I guess I was just a little bit surprised that, you know, and, and I'm assuming that they're, they have worked out deals with the, uh, the, 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 uh, the publishers of these games so that, you know, they, the publishers are making money by having them in Apple Arcade. So it makes a certain amount of sense to keep things yeah. over, turning it over and keep it fresh. Um, so other than that, you know, I think Jeff said it well, though, just as long as you set your expectation, um, you know, yeah, okay. One of your favorites may may disappear. Right. I I can't really relate to the whole saving my levels or you know saving my high scores. That that just I, that's just not the way I'm put together. Um, yeah. But you know what what it also means is that now you will have the opportunity, or you will be you can be looking at this as having the opportunity to try out all these games. And then if and when one does leave, 
you can purchase it and continue to play it. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, good to see Bob Beach in the chat here. He's up a real late night here watching oh, the show wow. here. And uh, he uh, is asking, why are they leaving? Not enough people playing them. I would go under that assumption because uh, I don't think Apple, like like a, a game like Oregon Trail is not going to go anywhere anytime soon because it's very popular. Uh, so I would, I would, uh, I would be probably, uh, I would probably say that that's probably the case that it's not very popular. And, my, and I'm assuming that it's the game developers or game owners that have made this choice. And, you know, they're, they're probably, I can't imagine there wouldn't be uh, like keystone points in the contracts where the, the game owners have the opportunity to say, yes, let's continue yeah. or no, let's don't. And, uh, and I'm assuming Apple could probably do the same, but I'm betting that it's the developers who said, nah, we're, we're out because th- yeah. I just, I'm assuming they are not making enough money on the games in the app store to continue to support them there. And so they'll support them other places yeah. instead. It only really makes sense. And yeah, we don't you. know. Yeah. We don't know what the agreement between Apple and the developers is as far as revenue splits uh, for arcade subscriptions or how it works. So we are all speculating here, but I'm kind of like you, Jeff. I would think that both sides would have an out at some point mm-hmm. because Apple doesn't want games in there that, you know, just to have them there to say, Oh, we have, you know, these extra 15 games that nobody really cares about. Yeah. You know, or, sure. you know, on the other hand, maybe the the publishers, maybe they're popular and the publishers are saying, hey, we want, we think we can do better not right. in Apple Arcade. So, you know, it's it's speculation, but it would make sense that it could go both ways. Sure. Oh, and, sure. and it's also possible that these are all games where the developers came in uh, with an agreement that it would be for a set amount of time. And then at the end of that time, they could decide if they were going to do another contract with Apple and uh, that they're coming up at the end of that. And everyone agreed that, no, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Well, I guess whoever has those games is going to have to move on to others. There's plenty of others in that catalog. I could say, I could say that. So, Mm -hmm. um, Next story here, Netflix. Netflix has been in the news quite a bit. They lost money and uh, losing subscribers and all that fun stuff. Um, but uh, this article was interesting. Uh, Netflix new ad supported plan won't have the full catalog available. Uh, they, as I said, Netflix, Netflix has been struggling as of late, losing uh, over two hundred thousand subscribers earlier this year, and they lost more uh, after this uh, other. A report of their earnings. Um, so I think the details really is in the fact is uh, Netflix is going to have to get contracts with, uh, with each of these uh, movie studios to, to, you know, to set that up for, to be able to stream with, with ads. Cause obviously they're going to make money on the ads. Well, they're going to also have to work that out with the, with the, the movie studios and whoever else with the, the subscription. Um, they did partner with Microsoft to launch this cheap subscription plan. So this is a, Microsoft is going to help them along and try to get this going. Um, Chuck, what do you think? This is uh, this this I think this was inevitable with Netflix, honestly. Yeah, um, you know, you said the M word right there. That scares yeah. me. Yeah. But uh, beyond that, I mean, this just this kind of makes sense. You know, the next Netflix decides to try to tap revenue sources at all levels, um, yeah. and it expands. I mean, it potentially expands its market. Um, and it's probably should, again, should be no surprise that maybe each tier is going to have, you know, certain things. And I would guess that we're going to see things moving between tiers, you know, like the things that are the hottest out there, the things that are just coming out of the theaters and going out to Netflix will be, you know, unavailable for X number of weeks or months. And then they'll drop down to the next tier or next year, they'll drop down to the next tier. So yeah, this one. As much as some of the um, some of the things that Netflix has been doing, this one didn't bother me a lot. Yeah, no, it doesn't bother me. I will still probably pay for the HD, what the the current plan I have now. Um, I think the next thing that's going to end up probably happening is uh, they're going to probably start charging for sh- password sharing because that does happen, obviously, quite a bit with families. Um, but I think this is this was definitely something that it doesn't bother me. What what, what do you think, Jeff? I, I think this was inevitable. Uh, as uh, 
as streaming companies look to increase their uh, subscriber base. Uh, you, you look for all the places that you can make your product more enticing. And the and there are two places really that these companies can make their products more enticing. First is with price and second is right. with content. Right. So uh, they already have a lot of content and uh, now that means look at price. So you add in a, a ad supported level. The other side of it, I despise paid subscriptions where you were fed ads. Yeah, I agree. And uh, and so from from that perspective, I think this is horrible. And uh, and and I don't think any company should do it. I understand mm-hmm. from a business standpoint where they do, but I think this is just horrible. Either show me ads or or make me pay money, but you don't do both. Yeah, I think I I I can think of two services that I that I subscribe to Paramount Plus, and I pay the uh, the no ads plan and mm-hmm. uh, and Hulu, um, and it seems that they've done a pretty good job putting bo- on those particular services that, that I haven't seen much of any ads in the shows. But uh, yeah, I agree with you. It's just something that I hey, I'm paying all this hard earned money for to, to not have to look at ads, and you're still giving them to me anyway. Yeah. Well, and that's that's where I kind of think that you, I mean, you as the consumer have to look at it and say. I'm be, they're, they're, I'm paying and they're making money off me both. Right. And so do I want to pay a little more and get the best experience possible? Or am I comfortable being having money made off of me? I mean, that's it. You know, that's that's what it boils yeah. down to. I, I mean, I, I, I know what you're saying, Jeff. And I, I agree with it because I hate it. I hate that idea, too. But if they were to bump, I'll just go science fiction on you and say, you know, if they were to bump the Netflix subscription up to 50 bucks. I'll be I'll be buying the lower tier and watching the ads, you know. Yeah, so exactly. I would still have access, but you know it would save me some money. Um, so you know I, I think it so much depends on on what you can afford and maybe how you use Netflix. I mean maybe yeah, yeah. you know maybe you're a casual user, you know, sort of like some of us might still use broadcast TV almost as background noise. Yep. Well then, ads would be fine; wouldn't bother you a bit, you know. So, it, it, yeah, I, I, it's, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's and, what, what yeah, the, but the buyer beware. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, just to wrap up this conversation, Bob Beach in the uh, YouTube chat here, but by the way, YouTube is at YouTube chat. We're live at youtube.com slash in touch with iOS. Uh, he says uh, Netflix with ads would drive me mad. Sooner pay for the non ad <laughs> subscription. I agree 100% with you, Bob. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm with Bob. And, yeah. uh, and I can say, at least with all the content that's available today, there's no content out there that's worth paying a subscription and being fed ads. Yep. And Absolutely. if that was my only option, I uh, and it was a service that I had today, and they were changing to that, yep. I would not have that service anymore, and I would just miss out on that content. Absolutely, or find another way to see it. You know, like yeah. go over to a friend's house. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, next story here: uh, Apple One Bundle. We've talked about that many times on this show. Um, I think it's a well worth the value uh, uh, of what it provides. Uh, with the subscription starting at fourteen ninety five, with the individual all the way up to the premier plan, which I have, and I think the, 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 the both of you as well. Um, but uh, today there was a story here: uh, the subscription services can at power Apple back to three trillion and beyond. This is according to Morgan Stanley. Uh, uh, the Apple services business is the engine that will uh, power the company back into a market value to more to three trillion. Uh, while the market still tends to uh, uh, to value Apple as a hardware company. You know, shifting to a lifetime value-based approach, which takes into account the recurring revenues from services, suggests long-term upside to, to over two hundred dollars a share. I'd take that, uh, or more than three hundred or three trillion dollars in market value, according to what Morgan Stanley says. Um, hey, I think Apple's been smart with with all services, and they they keep getting into more services: Apple TV Plus, this, and others. Uh, I think it's a it's definitely the the future for Apple going forward, and they're not just a hardware company; they're they're a, they're a services company as well. What do you think, Chuck? Apple is hey, very I, much a services company. Yep. And um, yeah, there you go. So if Apple can make a lot of money with this, then uh, then they will, and I think it's a safe bet they will. Yep. 
Well, and and take a look. You know, we we're just talking about Netflix, okay? Um, right. You know, they they kind of have one thing to peddle, and that is movies and documentaries, but video entertainment. Let's let's do do it that way. You know, with the one bundle, you have access to more storage for your your uh, devices and your and your Mac. Mm-hmm. Let me see. We see if I can get them all. Um, you have um, the the the, uh, the games we were talking about. Um, mm-hmm. You have Apple News, which you know may or may not be your thing, but it definitely is a quality product. What am I missing? I'm missing one. I'm uh, fitness. Fitness. You have access to fitness again. That might not be your thing, but I, I think it's interesting that I can discount one or even two of these services, and the value is still there for me. Mm-hmm. So, so I really like that, and of course, it also helps lock the um, the uh, the customer into the Apple ecosystem. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it feels like it's a win for Apple, and it feels like it's a win for the c- the consumer, assuming that they're happy being in the Apple ecosystem. And if yes. not, then you know. And and Chuck, you just hit the um, the the key to having a success, successful product right there. Yep. It has to be. Uh, something that generates value for the company, but also for the consumer. And if you can do that, then uh, uh, there you go. And I I think Apple is doing that. Yeah, they are. I mean, they're very successful with these subscriptions for sure. And they'll continue. So uh, a couple more stories here. Um, This uh, came up uh, actually today as we record. Uh, T-Mobile and Apple are teaming up to make IT easier for small businesses. Uh, T-Mobile is teaming up with Apple to introduce a plan just for small businesses that tackles the IT pain points that they face uh, keeping their business and employees connected. Uh, this is a business unlimited ultimate plus for iPhone is, is the first and only wireless plan that makes IT easy for small businesses. Pairing Apple business essentials with Apple care plus for business essentials, along with a new iPhone 13 for new lines, 200 gigabytes of high speed hotspot data per month and more. Wow. That, that's some pretty good <laughs> hotspot speed there. Um, and I think this is a smart idea. Apple's committed to help the small business thrive. They've got they have this, the this, the small business uh, systems that they're already dabbling into, and T-Mobile just continues to to grow their market. So, uh, Chuck, what do you think? I love this. I love yeah, it. Me too. It it's it's kind of surprising at this point that IT seems to be getting more complex and more difficult for small businesses. As yeah. as everything's, we all seem to think that things are getting easier. And I know several small businesses that, and, and some some medium sized and large businesses that struggle with with IT. So anything that can come as as sort of a package deal, and with a lot of support and a lot of expertise, and of course the uh, the Apple hardware and software's ease of use, uh, this is just a great win. And I love the fact that they're doing it with T-Mobile, not just Sprint, not just. AT&T, but they're, you know, they're picking somebody else. So, you know, another right. Apple partnership. Absolutely. Jeff, what do you think? Uh, Chuck, you said it, uh, it seems surprising that IT is getting more complex. <laughs> um, it's, it's different complex it, it is how I see it. Uh, there was a time when IT was the command line and dip switches. And, uh, and now it's not that so much, but there's so many other moving pieces in the mix and uh, and so much more that goes into security than we had before. It doesn't surprise me that this is a big problem for small and mid-sized well, and, and even enterprise-level businesses. And when I look at what Apple's doing, I'm thinking that this is so smart. Apple has failed at being a uh, a good business partner for uh, businesses for decades, and uh, and they finally finally realized this is not something they're good at, even though they want to be in that space. And that's when they started doing partnerships, like working with IBM, and uh, and now you have the the T Mobile thing, and and I believe there's some other companies along the way that they've they've partnered up with for for different things. And this is great because now instead of continuing to fail to get into an area that they want to be or a market they want to be, they're partnering with the people that already know how to do it 
and getting in uh, through the back door that way. Yeah, which absolutely. is not something I would have expected of Apple, uh, you know, 20 years ago. But it's in that sense, they're a much more savvy company now than they were. At, le- at least that's how it looks. Yep, absolutely. Uh, last story. I really, really always love these uh, good stories that uh, the Apple Watch uh, was a success for for, for health. Uh this one uh, was on the, on the news this week. Um, Apple Watch helped diagnose a deadly tumor, saved a Maine woman's life. Uh, a Maine woman was recovering from a life-saving surgery in Massachusetts General Hospital thanks to, the, to her Apple Watch. Truly saved her life. It, uh, she swears it by, by, by now, and I think a lot of people do. Um, I guess the same thing that what all the, the Apple Watch always does. It, sh- it shows you have AFib. Um, you go to your doctor, and you get it checked out, and then sure enough, she had a a tumor that, that if it hadn't been uh, removed, she would not be here today. So um, Apple Watch, is, I, I, we can't stress it enough uh, how, how valuable it is to have it as a health, not as a, something that's going to uh, always uh, suggest your health issues, but to help you along with it. And um, I think this is another awesome story when it comes to the Apple Watch. What do you think, Jeff? I think this is fantastic. I'm so happy she is recovering and is uh, and, uh, apparently going to be uh, just fine. When I see what's happening with Apple Watch in the news for, for the health and fitness space, I'm surprised that I don't see articles about how Samsung smartwatches save someone's life you or a Fitbit do. save someone's <laughs> life. It's always, always the Apple Watch saves someone's life. Absolutely. Jock, your thoughts? Um, you know, just what Jeff said. Uh, and although that's an interesting point, Jeff. I really hadn't thought about that, but you don't hear those kind of stories. I mean, there's no reason why we shouldn't hear one about uh, a Samsung uh, smartwatch that they have similar sensors to Apple Watch. Yeah. So it's either a PR move or whatever. I, I, I love the fact, though, that you know, and hey, if your Samsung watch saved your life, good for you. You know, great and good for Samsung. Um, yeah. You know, but at the end of the day, the message I I love is that people are more and more people are understanding that these they don't have to be medical grade devices to you know improve your chances of recovering from a fall mm-hmm. or having a fib or whatever. You know, it's it's not Apple's not in the business of trying to diagnose everything. But they're saying, hey, this this might be something you want to go and check out. And, you know, we 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 all know people who have experienced that and had po- very positive outcomes, sometimes life saving outcomes. Here's mm-hmm. one more. So, yeah, yeah I, I think it's great. And I just I wish more people would recognize that aspect of the Apple Watch. I, I agree. Definitely. All right, that's the news stories for this week. Uh, let's move on to topics. Uh, well, iOS 15.6 finally was released. Uh, it was released yesterday as we record this. Uh, this is a must update, I must say. There's over 39 security fixes that are that are being uh, listed as far as what uh, security content. And we have links in the show notes, so I'm not going to go through every single thing that uh, that this is happening. I think one of them that kind of stood out uh uh, was uh, some the stuff with the uh, with iCloud security being accessed iCloud and a lot of other stuff iCloud photo library where they, they could get sens- sensitive information that kind of stuff uh, but I can't say it I can't stress it enough I'm sure you guys could be would say the same it's this is something to go out and update it today I mean it's it's something that you really need to do presumably this is going to be the last update for iOS 15 uh, before iOS 16 comes out. Uh, uh, barring any other security issues that come come about, but uh, I think this is something we definitely need to you need to go out and update. Yep, uh, we might see another security update. It just depends on what crazy stuff uh, gets yeah. discovered. But uh, uh, I mean, regardless, go install these updates. Important security updates. Do it. Yes, definitely do yep. it. Um, go ahead, Chuck. Yeah, well, I'll I'll throw in with that too. The only thing, and I admit, when I saw this come out yesterday, it's like, okay, start my clock, because yeah. I want to I want to wait twenty four hours and see if there's any kind of widespread issues, um, just because, especially especially for the phone and the Mac, the iPad and the, and the, the watch a little bit less, but 
you know, I don't want anything bricked. I don't want any, any challenges. And we've seen that in the past. And unfortunately, all you have to do is have that happen once. And you feel like, you know, I'm yeah. going to be just a little cautious. So I've been at risk all this time in theory for these 39 security yeah. vulnerabilities. So I'm not sure that 24 hours is going to make that big a deal or big a difference. So, mm -hmm. but now we're, we're pretty much at and over my 24 hours. So I will be installing yeah. things later tonight. Good. Chuck, I typically, as soon as the updates drop, um, start my, uh, my process of, uh, of installing it. I actually have a, uh, an order that I do my devices in because my plan is I will never have two devices out of commission for updates at the same time. So uh, uh, I start with the iPad Pro. When that works out okay, then I move on to the uh, to the iPhone. And when that works out okay, then I'll start the Apple Watch update. And after that finishes, then it's off <clears throat> to uh, HomePods and then Apple TV. And then finally, my Mac gets it. Interesting strategy. Interesting strategy. Yeah. I did go do the Mac. I did do my Mac yesterday, and I got a little scared because you know how sometimes it it just sits in the the, the progress bar is just going super slow and doesn't have the time yet as far as telling you how much time is left to update it. It's like, oh no, what did I do? <laughs> so finally, it rebooted about twice, and then finally it kicked in and it did its thing. Well, so. I I have a, a keyboard that has backlighting, physically connected, mm -hmm. and uh, and an iPad physically connected. And uh, so I knew, even though everything appeared to be, to be, uh, my cat has decided to hop up on the desk and she's trying to bite the camera and the microphone. She's, she's my sweet office assistant. Anyhow, yes. um, I, I knew that even though it appeared on screen that everything is locked up, it wasn't because I kept watching the lights go out on the keyboard and then the lights would come back on and then the iPad would wake up. And then later on, everything would go back out and come back up. So it was it was creepy to watch, but at least I knew that it hadn't frozen. Yeah. And I've gotten to the point now where I, I want to do it right before I go to bed. I want to start it and then go, go to so sleep. So you don't have to watch. So I don't have be to watch stressed. because, because if it's, if it's going to freeze, it'll, fr it'll still be frozen in the morning, but I won't have to go through, endure that, that stress. That David was talking about, you know, so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So, uh, but yeah, at this point, go ahead, update it. I don't think there's going to be any any logical reason not to update. Uh, don't go through those that update. So, um, a couple other updates that happened uh, watch OS 8.7 had some bug fixes and performance improvements. Um, I really haven't noticed much on the Apple Watch, uh, but uh, Go ahead, same thing. It's going to have some some bug updates. Go ahead and do that. 8.7 is the latest version for Apple Watch. Uh, and iPad OS as well. Uh, the one thing on iPad OS that stood out is uh, it's going to fix an issue for those of you who have the iPad mini 6th uh, six, uh, six gen. Uh, the, the battery charging was a problem. Uh, so uh, make sure you uh, do your iPads as well. Um, one thing I'll note for the, for the Apple watch, we presumably are going to think that this is going to be the last update for this, to the series three watch. I would, you know, I would anticipate, um, it, it, it did some bug fixes, but I just can't imagine, of course, anybody who has a series three ends up having to erase the watch and, and <laughs> reinstalling again, cause there's never enough space on that watch. Cause it was so, so small. So, so Apple needs to retire that watch. I don't know why they still sell it. Honestly, I agree. <laughs> so uh price yeah it's because it's, it's 199 um so uh just be aware of that uh one thing i did i also noticed uh oh i'm sorry the home pod home pod uh also was uh updated uh jeff i'm sure you'll be uh grilling through all this trying to figure out if it, if it actually fixed anything <laughs> it's always a problem so uh, far nothing appears fixed yeah, same but same hey, stuff you're doing. At least with. Uh, I can talk to it in other languages. Yeah, now. you could you could talk Mandarin, Chinese, and uh, Cantonese if you so choose, or Japanese for that matter. So uh, yeah, so at least that works, huh? Uh, so uh, they got that, and then um, let's uh, and then we can mention iOS 16 
uh, developer beta three is, is continues that there hasn't been really any updates and public beta one has come out as well. Uh, we've talked a lot about what iOS 16 is going to have. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, we'll kind of skip any other things to talk about since you can go back and listen uh, to hear what other things are going on. But as things become uh, noted, we'll, we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely say something. So um, next topic, I wanted to talk a little about Apple TV. Um, uh, the, uh, what kind of, uh, inspired me to talk about this is the fact that I did buy a, uh, Apple TV 4k during prime day, which is a 2021 version of it. And, uh, I now have four Apple TVs in my house. <laughs> so, uh, one of them being the HD, the other three being the 4k. Um, and, uh, boy, I, I, I went through the setup process. It was, it was pretty, pretty phenomenal. Uh, and, uh, and very automated. They really have done a great job because I hadn't really hadn't gone through and done a reset of an Apple TV in quite a while. Uh, but the nice thing about it is as soon as you sign into your, your Apple ID, it's going to say, Hey, do you want to sync all your devices with all the same apps on all your other Apple TVs on your network? So I went ahead and did that. And then, and, then, and sure enough, all the apps I had, um, previously, uh, on uh, other Apple TVs, it just synced. So it just really makes it, uh, makes it a, a great, way of doing it. I also noticed there was definitely a performance uh, improvement on the 2021 model because uh, I had the two the two 4K ones, I believe, were the 2017 or 2019. I, I have a link actually in the show notes here on identifying your Apple TV model. Uh, yeah, it was 2017 when the, when the first gen came out. So this is the second gen uh, 4K. Uh, so it does definitely seem that the processor makes a difference. It is, it was, it was, a lot zippier. I, I, you, you definitely notice it. The one good thing about the new Apple TV is got it has the new second, the new second gen uh, remote, which is I really like this remote a lot. Um, so uh, you have that. Uh, but yeah, I, I have a link here showing about all all the Apple TV models going all the way back to the first one that came out in two thousand seven. Did you guys have that first generation uh, uh, Apple TV? I did. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I did too. Oh, yeah. the, 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 I thought that was a great, I, and I, I, and I, I love the fact that you, you, the enthusiasts could hack it and you mm-hmm. could do all kinds of other fun stuff with it. It was for its time. It was, it was, it was a uh, very cool. Um, so, and I look through this list and I, I'm a sick person. I owned every single one. <laughs> so. You know, I, I bought the Apple TV HD when it came out. Yeah. And because I, it, you know, it was timed upgrade from, the third gen or second, whatever it was that, that, that I had. And, um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that Apple TV. It's still the only one I have and it's connected to my TV right now. And, uh, and it, it just feels horrible to me that it is now, uh, going to be considered obsolete. Um, yeah, I was just going to talk about that. I do have a link. Oh, did I, did I jump ahead? No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can um, you can talk about it. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, now, granted, I bought this thing in 2015, so it's yeah. it's. I mean, at this point, come on, it's what seven years old already, yeah. eight years old, something like that. Um, simple math is hard in the evening, um, at, but at the same time, it still works just as good as the day I plugged it in, and uh, and the the feeling that. At some point, probably relatively soon, I'm going to need to replace it because it's it just no longer supports whatever's happening with uh, with new software updates. Just kind of makes me sad because it's such a, a great little box and it just won't stop working. No, it doesn't. Yeah, and I just I, I in fact since I have the I, I have some I have Apple TVs to play with, I just wiped it uh, and doing a full fresh install on it, and uh, it still seems you know pretty pretty zippy for its age and. And it's a perfectly fine device. It's not like the the series three or the or the or the, the third gen or the second gen, which are obsolete. Uh, this is you know, it's now considered vintage. That's how Apple classifies it. So yeah, um, uh, so it's definitely something uh, you uh, uh, you'll be able to continue to use for quite a while. I mean, even the even the second gen and the third gen, people are still using it uh, just to AirPlay stuff and be able to share your screen. And uh, even though you can't, the apps aren't going to get updated anymore. It's still it, it, it doesn't still, have much. It still works great for it's, that. I probably, I, I'm sure I have a second gen sitting in a, in a, a second or third gen sitting in my, in my uh, closet or somewhere. Um, 
it's always yeah. fun to go, pull it out and like, oh god, this thing's slow. <laughs> yeah, and, and now that I think about it, it's it's a third gen that I had, and uh, ah. and I never got rid of it. I just threw it in the box with my projector okay. because, of yeah. course, who doesn't have a projector just sitting around? That's and true. Um, <laughs> um, it gets used for AirPlay, and the third gen still supports um, uh, Apple TV app, so. You can still watch all the TV shows and movies and stuff. So it's it's still a perfectly usable thing for when I need to pull it out and we're doing like a like a backyard yep. uh, movie night. Absolutely. I, I I do wish Apple would do just a little better job because I, I think you're right, Jeff. You know, I've got honestly, I'm not sure what vintage they are, or excuse me, what what year they are. Um, but I've got a couple Apple TVs around and you know, some of the secondary and tertiary ones don't get used enough for me to really say, oh yeah, that, that feature is missing. Yep. But you know, it's, it's tough to, when you have this little black box on top of your TV to tell which one it is, um, that's the first thing, but I wish they would do a little better job of, of explaining, you know, what the newest versions do. Cause I feel like when a new Apple TV comes out, at least for me, okay, what have you done? Really? I mean, you've made it faster and that's great. Um, you know, but, and seven years, I mean, seven years at this stage, seven years is a long time in tech. Mm-hmm. And an Apple, yes. t- Apple TV is not something you're going to go and get repaired. If, you know, if it, if it dies on you, you're going to go get a new you one. You just get a new one. Yeah. Right. So the, the fact that this been, it's been moved over to vintage, I think is good for Apple because it means that, you know, the expectations are lowered about having to support something that is that old and that slow. But the thing is, it's not that slow. It isn't. Well, I, I'm playing slow. Apple Arcade stuff on it all the time, and there's never a lag at all. Well, let's see, there you go. So you know that, that's great. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. I I just I can't get too excited over this. You know, now it's because you haven't invested that much money in it, and if you've used it at all, you've gotten your money's more than your oh, money's worth. I've out got of more it. than my money's worth out of it. And, yeah. And now, just to be clear, I'm not wailing and gnashing my teeth. I, I'm just <laughs> lamenting the fact that here's this amazing product that I have and it's and it's now considered a vintage thing and it still works so well. It still works fine. Mm-hmm. It's yep. they're gonna continue to support it. Fifteen dot six just since just, just dropped for T V OS as well. Uh I was gonna mention yeah, that and, as well. So, uh, and, it's, and it, it supports uh T V OS what what's the next version? T V O sixteen. Sixteen's the next version, yeah, and it supports yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. supports that too. So, yeah. So it's going to be a while. Yeah, I think so. At, uh, what Apple needs to do before I update this Apple TV is uh, release a new model that offers something more than I'm already getting. There, then there is a rumor that that the Apple is looking at potentially releasing a new model of the uh, of the 4K. I'm going to assume it's a 4K. Like that would be an 8K, but um, but. You know, again, you go you go to look at uh, you go to look at other platforms like Roku, which is so inexpensive. You can you know buy a, a basic Roku for thirty dollars, and to, some of them are already HD, and they even it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's still even less than what an Apple TV is. So, uh, so it's gonna be interesting where they go with it. Um, I still think it's a great device. I mean, I I'm the crazy person that has uh, the uh, the Google TV and the Roku and all the other devices to look at all the platforms to kind of see what they do. And I, I go, always go, Oh, of course, because I love Apple, but it also is that I think, honestly, I think that the platform itself, the interface is so much better. Well, David, I have, um, I have Roku devices and I have a fire TV, um, fire TV as, well, as well. And, you know, I don't think there's any question at the interface. I mean, that's what, that's what you're buying the Apple TV for is the interface i mean because if you watch two channels then it probably doesn't or two two online channels or whatever probably doesn't make any difference what you buy right leave me alone um (laughs) (laughs) oh no my cat's in your office now yeah that's right (laughs) no that 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 was an an amazon device talking to me oh because you said a lady (laughs) yeah probably so um but you know, I, I think that's the thing that people get a little bit hung up on. They get hung up on the price yeah. and they get hung up on, well, but the Roku will do just everything the Apple TV will. And well, yeah, we've done this before. You know, I can take a Ferrari to the grocery store or I can take 
my car to the grocery store, or I can, you know, haul furniture with my Ferrari, or I can haul furniture with a dump truck. It's the right thing for the right job. And depending on what you, what experience you want and how much you use it. So if Roku is a fine product and it Amazon, is. Amazon Fire TV is not necessarily bad, but there are challenges with the interface that the Apple yes. TV doesn't suffer from. I, I agree. And there are two places where, uh, um, the Apple TV gives me more than I could get with a Roku or uh, a Fire Stick. And the first one is uh, if I actually do want to be an Apple Arcade user, now my my Apple TV is uh, is a gaming console. And the second thing, which is probably more important for, for a wider range of people, it's a HomeKit bridge. That's true. And, and point. even though I have HomePods, the home the the um the apple tv is the reliable solid always primary uh home kit bridge absolutely absolutely yep. so uh check it out i got links in the show notes here the, uh, and there's an apple tv user guide this uh the actual support uh, for apple tv uh, you can uh, also the other one here that identifies every model uh, of apple tv that's ever been released since 2007 um, so uh, check that out. But uh, I thought that'd be a good good way to to talk about devices here and uh, Apple TVs. I I think it's still going to be a viable product. Mm-hmm. We'll see where it goes. Uh, next topic here. I wanted to have a brief discussion here about the fact of the Apple Watch. We talked about the Apple Watch here a little bit a little bit ago. Here, um, should you buy a cellular Apple Watch? Is the service worth the cost? Now, I have a link here in the show notes from Nine to Five Mac that talks about this uh, very thing. Uh, is it worth having a, a cellular plan uh, on your watch? Uh, do you want to have your standalone device with you? Um, I think most people are buying the GPS version these days. Um, I probably should not admit it, but I did. I did but this. This Apple Watch is this GPS and cellular version because I didn't want to wait, <laughs> so I spent a little extra money for it. Um, but I've never activated the cellular version because I just don't find it to be any value. It's an extra ten dollars or fifteen dollars a month depending on your carrier, and and. Is it really worth having an Apple Watch that you can talk on when you're? I mean, most all of us, and I would say most of us carry our iPhones with us all the time. So, what do you guys think? I don't. I don't think it's worth it. I think it's totally dependent on your use case. Use case. I, right. I think cellular on Apple Watch for me is not worth it. But you know, it's you could say the same thing about iPad. Should you buy a cellular iPad? And it depends on how you're going to use it. If I right. wanted to go out running every morning. And uh, not have to carry my iPhone with me, then a cellular Apple Watch would make sense. But that's that's not how I use my Apple Watch. My phone goes with me. Yeah, me too. So yeah. I saw this article before you posted it in in here, and honestly, it got me to thinking a little bit. Mm-hmm. That if it, I've always resented the fact that the carriers want you know another ten ten or fifteen bucks a month, you know, to give me this service. But with the way the Apple Watch is is developing as a health device and a safety device and a security device, I'm starting to rethink this a little bit um, from the standpoint of, okay, if I can, it's going to cost me about, I think, 50 bucks more. I think that's the the price differential uh, for the cellular radio. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. And then I'm going to pay that, you know, 120 to, you know, whatever the number is, you know, if it's $15 a month, a year. Is that, that's not necessarily a bad little insurance policy that no matter what happens to my phone, uh, whether I have it with me, whether, you know, whether I end up in a situation where I don't have it, um, that I would have access to calling for help or having my Apple Watch call for help. Mm -hmm. And and so all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I'm... I admit, I don't know what I'll do because up to this point, I have not had a cellular watch, but when the time comes for the next one, I may rethink it and take a good hard look at it and do a little okay. more research into what it's, what it, what it will actually cost, how much more it will cost me a year. And and I look, I'm trying to look at it that way on a yearly basis, because that's the way that I would, I would measure it. Cause I mean, it's 10 or 15 bucks a month. That sounds like a lot of money, but when you do the math on it, or the peace of mind and the security and all those right. benefits, it may not be all that bad. It may not be bad at all. I, um, I think Pat, that's a valid argument. Um, 
And uh, and as you were laying that out, I was thinking, okay, so where are the places where I would want the safety features of an Apple Watch to uh, to be helpful to me when I don't have my iPhone handy, uh, like like fall detection. Um, and uh, and I'm pretty sure in my case, the only places that I am where my iPhone wouldn't be in my pocket or my hand. Um, it's going to be places like my home where the watch has Wi-Fi access already. Uh, now, if I was, if, if I was more often in places where my, where my iPhone was consistently not handy mm-hmm. and it wasn't places where, where, uh, my Apple watch knew the Wi-Fi network, then cellular suddenly starts making a lot more sense. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, Jeff, but there, you know, I'm thinking about places you might want to go that you don't want to take your phone for whatever reason, you know, mm-hmm. like to the beach. Okay. I'm going to the, for a day on the beach, which I don't go to a day on the beach, but the point is that, you know, I might not want to take my phone with me, but I'm still available and my Apple watch is still protecting. Um, oh, you, know, interesting. You, you talked about being out for a run, you know, well, if, if, you know, I, I've, I, I, I confess, I'm struggling with good examples for, of where I might not want to take my phone and not have access to Wi-Fi. But, you know, there are some out there. And so, it, I mean, factor all those things in, folks, if you're going to make a decision. But, you know, just think outside the box a little bit, um, because I, I can envision places that, well, if I go on the golf course, I mean, I always have my phone with me. Mm-hmm. If if I had my watch and it was cellular, I might not bother to keep it in my pocket. Yeah, that's true. You know, um, so pick, uh, pick your pick your sport. You know, anything that is out there, and 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 you, that your phone presents um, is it? It's a disadvantage to carry your phone. Mm-hmm. It might might be a place you want to consider. And I'm uh, like you. I'm not arguing yeah. it either. It's just yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm, 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 I'm Th- really those are excellent things to think about yeah, when definitely. you're deciding whether or not you want a cellular Apple Watch. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm reevaluating my position. That's good. And uh, I also want to note somebody in our YouTube chat here. Pat has uh, joined us late, and she's uh, really enjoying the show. I appreciate that. And yeah, hi, Pat. New, hello, Pat. And you, hello, Pat. And uh, you're very new to the Apple ecosystem. Well, welcome, because you're in, in a great place. Um, asks uh, that if if uh, you hike or exercise, uh, does a cellular watch help when you go without your iPhone? Well, yeah, it could. I mean, if you aren't going to keep your phone with you, that's uh, that's definitely going to be a security uh, point of, of your running and or if you're, ex- you're hiking and that watch is going to work as a phone. And many times does it come in handy in that case. So that there, there's a good case point with the Apple Watch with cellular that I think it would be well worth it. Um, I, I do a lot of hiking. Well, I live in Colorado. So uh, I better be doing a lot of hiking (laughs) and I, I always take my Apple watch and my phone with me when, when I go on hikes, my phone's there because it's also my camera. Um, uh, but the other thing is the Apple watch, I'm using it to track my, my hike. And, uh, and if I don't start that hike with a, with a full battery, then there's a likelihood that my Apple Watch is going to start giving me alerts by the end of the hike that yeah. um, that um, the battery's slow. So keep that in mind. You're like, how long are the hikes that you plan to go on? Are you going to be hiking in areas where cellular coverage is spotty? Because if if coverage is spotty, then you get a faster drain because the cellular antennas are are, uh, trying more power, trying to find a signal. Um, And and to be clear, I'm not trying to dissuade you from saying, oh, a cellular Apple Watch is the right thing for when I go on hikes. Yeah. It's just good to have as much information as possible so that when you go in and make that purchase, you feel like you, you've you researched it as much as you need to. Absolutely. David, do, um, you mind if, do you mind if I make up one more scenario? No, not at all. Go ahead. Um, because I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here trying to think of different use cases for, for the watch where the, the phone might not be appropriate. And, you know, if you were going into a potentially 
I hesitate to say hazardous situation, but maybe a situation where you're not completely comfortable. You could easily place a call on the watch to someone you you know and trust and Mm -hmm. say, hey, just listen in for a little while, make sure I'm okay. Because you're going to have a much harder time, you know, where's my phone, Um, you know, carrying this around, you know, am I okay? Am I okay? But, you know, if it's on your wrist, they would. That would definitely be more discreet. Yeah, yeah, much more discreet. And, you know, so, as, I mean, as, I don't think this is sexist. I hope not. But, you know, especially for women, we we seem to be so focused right now on on um, the air tags and tracking. Yep. Might be a situation where you want to be tracked, where you want somebody to know what, what you're going into and who you're going into it with and can maybe call for help if things go sideways. So yep. th- th- just, again, you've you got to make up all the, uh, the scenarios that might affect you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this, this uh, actually turned out to be a very lively topic. I'm great, glad I brought, brought it up. And uh, I think uh, definitely something to, to think about. One last thing I'll note is the fact that if you, if you don't have cellular and you have your Apple watch and if your watch, if your phone is in another room and you want to be able to answer your phone, that works great. But mm-hmm. if the, if you don't keep your phone with you yeah. and you're in, in a different location, then yeah, that it's, then you're not going to be uh, uh not going to, it's not going to be of any benefit to you. Um, but like, I think all three of us always have our five phones with us. <laughs> so it's just, Oh yeah. In most yeah. cases, if not at all. So, um, uh, but a uh, really great topic. Um, I'm glad, glad you gave got some great information. You want to add one more thing? Are we good? Me? All no. Right. no. Okay. I'm good. Great. I'm good. All right. Um, next topic. I wanted to talk a little bit about this product that I have. I had, uh, Dan, uh, on our show previous, and uh, Chuck, you have as well, um, about a product called PlexiCam. Uh, PlexiCam is a, a device that will hold a webcam or even an iPhone as a camera, and uh, it does give you the op- option to uh, hook it right on your on your display, your monitor, or it also gives you the option to be able to hook it uh, on your uh, your laptop when you travel. Um, I've got two different models that I, I'm going to be showing on, on camera, but also describing it as well here. Uh, and uh, this first one here, this is the um, this is the Plexicam Mini. It's a Road Warrior, and basically what this has, I have actually the camera on here doesn't come with it. This is a Logitech 925e camera, which is a really nice uh, webcam. But you see that the, the bracket mounts the camera very nicely on uh, this bottom bracket, and then above here, this this Road Warrior kit comes with this little light. So you can have this as a nice setup, and it's uh, very, uh, very easy to uh, travel with it. This all comes uh, disassembled, so you can put it back together. Um, and the bracket just mounts at the top here for the for the uh, uh, for the light, and then the bottom bracket will mount here on the the bottom for the camera. You can do it with a webcam as well as a iPhone with with a with a with a phone holder. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but I'm I'm twisting it to the side here just to kind of give you a little bit the the, the display of the way this is this design and it's really nice because it's hooked in such a way for the with the webcam that's that's mounted to this one that allows you to be able to really get a good secure connection and this actually probably would work on your screen too because it's uh, it, it is really uh, hooked well. I had the first generation of the the PlexiCam and I noticed as I put this one together I and mean, if you guys can see this this is the the bracket and when you would put these brackets inside the holder um they it did have a little bit of give to it but right here they put they they added this as a new enhancement if you see this here this is a yeah. little piece of, piece of plastic here that that actually does a much better job of gripping uh the uh the shelf that actually this mounts to cuz I know Jeff you've had it a few times where it's fallen on you <laughs> uh that that yes. that that, that this, I, I just, they haven't even noticed this, but I, I really wanted to point this out because I had noticed it. I'm like, oh my God, this is great. I want to, I'm going to use this one now. The bracket that I'm using right now, I'm using it with an iPhone. I, that that's, that's the first generation of the models. Um, so uh, they now have added this, which is, which is great. So, but the nice thing about this, this is they, they, they kind of call this a teleprompter. It allows you to be able to have this in the middle of your screen and be able to uh, uh, have your eye contact. You're looking straight at the camera. If you're if you're watching live on the video or or, or this video that we're, we're showing here, uh, you, I've got this in front of me, but I'm looking straight at the camera right now because it's at my eye level. And, and and we know that when we have webcams at the very top of a monitor, or if you're using the webcam on your on your laptop, sometimes you're looking up, you're looking down, and and this really forces you to to look straight ahead and 
give, gives that professional view when it comes to that. So, but this is the, this, again, this is the, um, this is the, this is a road warrior, but this is the mini it's called the Plexicam mini. Um, and, um, uh, pricing. I'll have links in the show notes of the pricing. It's around, around this one is around eighty dollars, which actually, really, if you think about, it, isn't too terribly expensive. But the nice thing is, it's it's a clear plexiglass, and you can see right through it. So it's really not a bad thing. Um, there's another model that that I've got here today. I was going to show as well. This is the Plexicam Pro Plus. Now this one has uh, uh, is a little longer in, in in length, so you can have it if you if you need to have the, the camera move down a little further down on it. It also has a camera mount. Uh, uh, this can this light here that I have uh, is the Loom Cube. Uh, this is this is actually the older model. They have a new model now, the series uh, a, a second uh, generation model. Of this, but again, this is kind of shows you what what it it can do as far as how you can mount another light to this because this one does not come with a light kit unless you buy it as an extra accessory. Um, down here is a is a uh, a bracket that holds the iPhone and that's how you're watching me right now. I have a very similar bracket to this one that holds your iPhone as a camera. I'm telling you, I love having the iPhone as a webcam. I guess I'm spoiled. I have an extra iPhone that I can use because it is kind of uh, difficult. You know, here's my iPhone here. You know, you have to, you put this in and then you don't have access to your iPhone when you're, when you're doing a conference. Uh, so sometimes you need to look at something and, <laughs> and you might get interrupted. You got to make sure you put it on, on, an airplane mode or, 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 or keep it in focus mode. But, um, but again, as you see, it's designed the same way. And, uh, and, uh, the same thing I mentioned before, these, there's the bracket there and there's the uh, little thing there, which is great. These new brackets are really nice that uh, keeps it in place. So I wonder if that's um, something that, uh, uh, we can get as, uh, an upgrade for our first gens. Yeah, I, I know I know PlexCam does allow you to buy the extra parts, and that's a good segue uh, for that because if you want to get this, the one with the extender, uh, I'm going to juggle my hands here. This is the extra bracket that, that came with my original, and this is this this actually goes uh, in tandem with the other bracket here. I just want to be dropping stuff here while I'm doing this, and this will extend it even even further length if you require that have the much more distance, uh, so it it kind of daisy chains, I guess you could say, uh, uh, in, in a way. So it, it goes all the way down to the bottom of your monitor if you happen to have a lar larger monitor and need to do that. So, But as far as getting the brackets go, they're, they're, they're awesome as far as being able to buy any extra accessories. You can reach out to them. Their customer service is amazing. I mean, I've, anytime you, I've reached out to them, they've, they've been always great uh, to, to get help uh, with any of their products. And uh, I, I think it's something that's, that's great. I'd love to hear. Uh, Ch uh, I'll start with Chuck here. What? How, how have you been liking it? Because you use, I believe you have a DSLR that you're, or not DSLR, but you have an SLR that's a, a camera that you're using for your place cam, right? Yeah, that's that's what I'm using now. Is um, it's I've got a Lumix uh, DSLR mounted on this, and uh, frankly, it stays. This is my recording machine, so or my yeah. life's, you know, my live uh, recording machine, so it pretty much stays in place the whole time, and. Yeah. Uh, David, you're right. You know, it, it looks so unprofessional. I mean, and especially yeah. after lock, looking after like lockdown, <laughs> you know, looking people up. looking up, people looking down, you know, yeah. it's like, for heaven's sake, if nothing else, folks, just, you know, get your camera leveled on a bunch of books or something. But the Plexicam makes it so nice to do. Um, behind me is, is the office machine that that's, you know, where I do the office stuff. And I have a Plexicam back there with a, uh, a, a just a regular webcam. But same same idea, you know. Mm -hmm. I've and believe me, I've tried everything. I've had tripods in front of the screen. I've had tripods off to the side of the screen with an arm across. Oh, and it you and I've done this all the time. <laughs> yeah, it always blocks your view. And it with does. the Plexicam, the only thing that is blocking my view is the camera itself. You know, the extender that Dave's talking about. I have that on here. Um, but there's there's everything else on my screen is completely visible. And I've gotten rid of all those other solutions because this does everything I wanted to do. And also, as Dave was was alluding to, you know, if I wanted to drop this down a little bit, you know, just to change the angle, it's not hard. I just reach over and slide it down. It yeah, up. so I'm, I'm doing the sound camera now. It slides up or slides down. Yeah, so you can, and you, you know. And, and, and it's any modification you want. You don't, if you don't use the light, like we, you and I, we all use our external lights. So we really, uh -huh, I wouldn't right. need this. I just put this on so everybody could see it. Cause not, not everybody's like us having uh, all these professional lights here. Not really professional, but good lights uh, that sometimes you just want to have a bracket that holds a light. And this comes completely off. And that's how I've been using it 
for quite a while. I don't have a light bracket on my other one that I'm using now. So, uh, but you're right. Yeah, it, it's fully adjustable and it'll move all the way up to the top if you don't have this other bracket on. Um, and if you want and to position it any way you'd like, just slide it up or down. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I agree with you. But, but the other great thing I think is the fact that it just, it hooks over your monitor or your laptop. So mm-hmm. there's, there's e- the oh, easy, easy on, easy off. Um, it's and if that. you, yeah. And if you, like I have mine, I know exactly where I have it set. So I'm cheating. I cheat a little bit because if I do need to take it off or want to take it off, I just have a little bit of duct tape up on the back of the Mac, which is where the edge of the Plexicam yeah. goes. So all I do is just line it right up, drop it back in, and it's in exactly the same place. So that's, that's like, another function. You're not attaching anything like mm-hmm. some of the webcams you do. You have to. Or even if you don't have to attach them, you, you know, you you're playing with the angle, trying to get it right. This is first time, every time, exactly the way I want it. Absolutely. Jeff, you've got one too. And what's, how has it been for you? Uh, it's been great. And uh, one thing we really haven't talked about, you touched on it very briefly. You can see through it. Yes. That's and, yep. uh, mm-hmm. and that's actually something people really need to know about. It is so clear. So, yeah. That, you see my uh, face. I'm showing on camera here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so I, uh, I, I moderate webinars for uh, a bunch of companies. One, you know, one of the things that I do, so I have to have a script for the, for the event and I can have the script where it's sitting with, uh, with the Plexicam covering part of it up and it doesn't matter because none of the text is distorted. Yep. And like right now, the, the way my, my screen is set up, Chuck is completely behind the bottom of the plexicam arm and except for the fact that uh, i can like physically see the edges of the plexicam arm if i couldn't see those i wouldn't know that the plexicam was sitting directly in front of chuck um i i did have a minor problem earlier where um uh when my office manager decided she was going to get rambunctious and try and bite the the camera and the microphone, she moved my camera. So it's actually a little bit lower than it was when we started the show. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, mo- moving it back up in place is, you know, there we go. And now it's basically straight and uh, we're good. Yeah, I'm gonna want to reach out to Plexicam and ask him about this. The the new uh, p- plastic uh, uh, little uh, tabs they have in uh, the slider here. If you can get this as an after, after that would be after great. Purchase. Yeah, because I think uh, I, and, uh, like because, you mentioned, I've had a couple instances where my uh, the the arm with the camera has just slid off the bottom, and uh, before people freak out and think, oh, well, clearly it's it's a crap product, but because of that no, uh, I'm actually. Just, Picking my, up the whole arm or plexicam mount and moving it off to the side and yeah, back in front of in front of myself like this. several times a day because uh, I'll be on a Zoom call or or some other web call and then uh, and then I'm done so I just move the camera out of the way and uh, so it's back and forth all day long. Now, I mean, honestly, with as much as I move this around, it's amazing that the that it doesn't fall apart. But yep. you know it's it's built well enough that that's just not a problem. Yep. And what, you have a webcam, or do what kind of camera do you have? I'm using a Logitech C920 webcam with mine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's perfectly good phone. Perfectly yeah. good uh, uh, webcam. So I expect that will change when uh, when we get the new updates for iOS and macOS this fall. I do have the the uh, camera mount for this one as well. So. I'll I'll probably switch over to using an iPhone at that point. Yeah, well, I think you should. And a, a good segue on the iPhone. I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I have talked about it before. Re Incubate is the company. They make an amazing software called Camo Studio. Uh, yes, it's going to have that that, uh, that service is going to be that that uh, way of being able to use your uh, iPhone as a camera is going to be built into Mac OS Ventura uh, uh, mm-hmm. very shortly. So, uh, but I think Camo Studio still has got some great things because uh, it's got lower thirds and all kinds of other stuff the software provides. So, but I'll put a link in the show notes on that as well. 
Um, but uh, check it out, plexicam.com. It's, uh, again, all the links to all, everything we talked about here is in the show notes. And uh, uh, well worth it. Well worth the investment. I definitely think so. All right. Before we wrap things up, I have three apps I wanted to talk about briefly uh, that I have found I thought were uh, very um something that you'd really would like to have. Um, first one is a, uh, if you do travel, I don't know people are starting to start traveling again. Um, it's a app called flighty F L I G H T Y. It's a flights tracker app. And, uh, it does have some pretty amazing ways of being able to, uh, uh quickly track, uh, where, where flights are and, uh, gives all kinds of great information as far as where that flight is. Uh, it does have a free version and it does have uh, what the free version is going to include is no ads, live data. It does do iCloud sync. It does have an unlimited flights, but the pro version is going to give more push alerts and uh, all kinds of other stuff. And uh, it is not cheap when it comes to the pro version. If you're, if you're a heavy duty traveler, it has in-app purchases. You can get a month to month plan at five ninety nine five dollars ninety nine cents a month. Um, they have an annual at forty nine ninety nine, um, and they have flexible plans there as well. Uh, you could do lifetime if you really wanted to. The pro lifetime is uh, expensive, four hundred forty nine dollars. So, but I, I know that data costs a lot of money, and then and, and I, I can understand that the app developer wants to uh, uh, to recoup all that cost. So, but. The free version, unless you need a lot of that extra stuff, is it, I mean it's pretty awesome what they're offering for free on this app. So, so anybody travels with that, check that out. I think that's a great app. I'm cool. Thinking, have you, any of you guys have you seen that one before? No, this one is new to me, and yeah. uh, it looks cool. I like that there is a companion Mac app. There's well. a Mac app as well. Yes, there is. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you can uh, go use your Mac as well. Um, then the, the second app I found this week is called Rev Call Recorder, R-E-V, Call Recorder. And what this does is it actually records phone conversations on your iPhone. So you launch the app, and what it does is it allows you to be able to make a phone call, and it goes within the app, and it does record the phone call, and uh, you are able to have that recording. And of course, any, anytime I talk about something that records a phone call, you want to make sure that you're disclosing to the other party that uh, you are recording this co- phone conversation. Um, I believe it does uh, uh, say something when it, when the recording starts, but uh, you, you definitely want to make sure that you're doing that, especially in states that uh, really uh, mandate that you do that. Uh, but this comes in handy if you're having a phone conversation and it's something that you needed to record. All you do is launch the app and, and joins it. There's other methods of being able to record as well as you can actually, there's a phone number that you can call uh, that can join the call, like call, creating a, a three-way conversation, and it'll start recording and puts it into the app as well. Um, the, the cool thing about it is free. So you, it will, it'll free, it's free and clear as far as you want to record the call. You can download it as MP3 and, uh, and do that. What, where they're making their money is the transcription. If you want to have a transcription uh, of the, okay. of the, of the call. Yeah. It, it does a cost, I think something like a dollar 50 or so. I'm not sure the exact costs, uh, uh, off the top of my head, but it, yeah, it, that's where they, that's where they're making their money and you get, you can buy credits in the in-app purchases starting from a dollar 99, uh, to 10 credits for 1699. I believe it's like a, dollar 50. I don't know if it's a minute or what it is, but that's where they're making their money. Uh, but sometimes you need to have, be able to, to record conversations and, and just be legal with it. <laughs> don't just record and not and make sure that everybody knows. I'm pretty sure that the app does announce that it's recording once you start it. So, uh, but, uh, I haven't had a lot of time to play with it, but, uh, that that's definitely a cool app, uh, to look at as well. And then the last app I had that I wanted to mention real quick here is called is an app called Catalyst. That's C A T A L I S T. Uh, what this app does is it does uh, allow you to spend more time uh, doing what you love. You want to be able to capture uh, 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 er, uh, words of mouth, words of mouth method recommendations from friends. Um, finding new things, and it includes things like if whatever books you've read, whatever shows you've watched. Uh, uh, Top ten, uh, uh, top ten uh, podcasts. Uh, any, any, anything that you recommend. It does have a community that goes behind it. Uh, so it's bo- movies, TV shows, books, podcasts, and more. And you can add it. Creates lists uh, that you save everything that you want to do. 
uh, inspires others to, to, to take a look at us at maybe a particular book, a particular podcast, TV shows. Um, I thought that was a pretty cool little app and it is free. Uh, and it, it, it does, uh, it's absolutely free. There's no, no, no charge at all for it. And, uh, it does give you opportunities to be able to, to kind of, maybe it's kind of a social media thing, you know, that allows you to, to do that. So I thought this was a, a pretty cool app too. Cool. Yeah. So, so I need to, keep three, tra- need to keep track of that stuff. That, that's, I'll have to check yeah. this out. So I, I'm, I'm going to check it out right some more. Now. Yeah. Check that one out. So, um, so three I, I, great app. I've been on the hunt for a good app for keeping track of TV shows and movies. And, uh, I mean, and there's a lot of great stuff out there, but yeah. so much of it, it, it feels like it just gets too complicated in, in just trying to keep track of everything. Yep. And uh, just looking at the interface on this one, it's looking to me like this one probably is better for like the just way watch. I want to keep track of stuff. Yeah, like the app Just yeah. Watch is, is one that comes to mind for me for mm-hmm. TV mm-hmm. shows. And, which and which is also movies. a good app. Yeah, very good. So. Hmm. Yeah, t- TV time is good for TV. But TV time. This this yeah. goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I'm just looking at the the graphic here. Um, must watch documentaries. I mean, yeah. that's that's a great category right there that I, I haven't seen anybody else track for you. So, yep, definitely. All right, we we had a full fun pack show this week. Let's go ahead and wrap things up for this week. Please send your comments and questions and suggestions to our email address, which is feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. Support the show by buying me a coffee at InTouchWithIOS.com slash coffee. We really appreciate it. You also can become a Patreon of the show by uh, going to Patreon.com slash InTouchWithIOS. We have two tiers available to support the show. We'd really appreciate it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe uh, so you're notified when we are live streaming, which is usually on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash in touch with iOS and where you can uh, watch and listen to past episodes as well as this live stream that we did today. Uh, visit in touch with iOS magazine on Flipboard where many of the articles and topics that we talk about are flipped into that magazine. The link is in the show notes. You can subscribe to the show in your favorite podcatcher, including Pocket Casts, Apple Podcasts, and many others. But better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Chuck Joyner, so glad you were back on the show. We always love having you. Where can people find you? Um, MacVoices.com is the best place. That's where everything that uh, Mac Voices does uh, is linked to. Um, we do Mac Voices Live Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific with Jeff and David and some other, other of our friends. We'd love to have you join us. That's at youtube.com slash Mac Voices TV. And on the socials, pretty much most of the socials you can find me is at Chuck Joyner or at Mac Voices. Thanks for having me, David. It's always a pleasure. Yes, thank you. And Jeff Gamut, it's always a pleasure to have you uh, uh, being on the show. You're such a great contributor. We really appreciate it. Where can people find you? Uh, it's, well, thanks as always for having me on. It's genuinely loads of fun every, yeah. every single week. Um, okay, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, Jay Gamut on both of those. Jay Gamut on YouTube for my occasional videos. And um, yeah, uh, Tuesdays with Chuck and Dave on uh, Mac Voices Live here uh, with Dave, well, and Chuck. <laughs> for in touch with ios uh the big show on thursdays the mac show on fridays and uh and then also on the context machine with brian chaffin um uh i do we have a second where i can do a shout out for wordcamp us okay if you're going to wordcamp us and you didn't get a ticket like most of us send me a uh a direct message on twitter and I'll add you to the Slack for those of us that will be there but don't have passes to the event. We've put together what we're calling the Taco Track, which is uh, a whole thing for all of us that are going to WordCamp US so that we can uh, coordinate all the different events that we're going to do, all the great taco trucks we're going to hit up, and uh, uh, just everything else that goes along with that. You'll find finding places to stay and uh, all uh, other activities to do. So hit me up and, uh, and I'll get you into the taco track slack. All right. Great. 
I will mention one thing. I will be uh, speaking at Mac Stock that's coming up this weekend. So probably at that time people listen to this, it's going to be close to the end of uh, that happening. That's on July 23rd and 24th. Uh, but we'll talk more about that uh, in, in future episodes, uh, what, uh, what we talked about, and uh, you even be able to sign up uh, to get the, the video tracks after the fact. So that's MacStockConferenceAndExpo.com if you want to check that out. And I want to thank you for listening. We really appreciate uh, you being here. We had a great time uh, doing the show for you, and we'll talk again soon.